Well done. Hello. We survived Halloween. <laughs> Still some moments. We're kind of suffering a holiday hangover here. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. We're, we're in it now. Uh, you know, we're, we're in that season that goes Halloween, and then suddenly it's, it's, it's the holidays. And then somewhere in the middle, we have to find time to cram Thanksgiving in the middle, uh, which is crazy. And if you're a performer and doing performing things, you're constantly going. And I, you know, I, I see this thing online. People talk about the, the 30 days of thankful. I, it's not a thing I do, but I get the idea of taking a moment to kind of take stock of what's good. I mean, for me, I've got to do it for two reasons. One, I've got a, really, a lot of really awesome things going in my life these days. And, and two, to be honest, uh, if I end up at a dinner with relatives, I need something to talk about that doesn't make anyone want to stab me with a fork. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. So I find things to, uh, I try to find things to, to focus on that are positive. Um, one of the things that's pretty obvious when you're standing here on a Monday night is this room uh, is so full of creative inspiration. Everyone in here is just percolating with ideas and, and, and cocktails, but mostly ideas. About a 50-50 mix, really. But it, it's amazing to me because I've been doing this a while. I come up here, I'm here every week, and I come up here and I still get inspired without fail. Something will happen that gets my mind going. Last week, in the wee hours, we were, we were nearly done. We were stumbling through the wee hours of the evening that we never talk about on the internet, even though there's this really cool thing we do that we're here much longer than the show you guys see. <laughs> Subtle, right? Put the B right in there. Subtle. Thank you. But, uh, you know, somebody said something that really got me thinking. It was actually Christopher Strand. Hey, Chris. Hi. That's him. Uh, <laughs> Which I, I know some of you went, really? Chris said something inspiring? <laughs> no, he's, he's, a, he's a font of creativity. He just keeps spewing it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm really dumping on you and I'm sorry. But the, the truth of the matter is he, he provides a, uh, some great perspective. One of the things he did was he came up here and he talked a bit about language. He talked about words and how they can define ideas or if you're not careful, they can compartmentalize them. And that, that idea just, it was really, it's a meaty idea to sink your teeth into and really spend some time thinking about how that works. And I started, I started thinking about it and I realized very quickly that I had an idea in my thinking that actually was kind of a live grenade. Uh, you know, I could, I could take it and, it and it could remove great logistical obstacles and clear up confusion, but if I used it wrong, it would just blow up in my face. And uh, I, I realized that actually scared me, and I wanted to kind of unpack that word for a minute in front of you guys if, and, and maybe kind of provide myself with some exposure therapy because I thought this would be the place to do it. I hope you guys are good with that. Cool. So, well, the word is mine. I... Specify the word is actually M-I-N-E. That is the word, not it is my word. I can see where that, you see already we're into the confusion on it, but mine uh, is a word that's kind of a mess. I mean, it, logistically it implies, you know, something that's yours and ownership or, 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 or possession. I mean, this is, this is my hat. This hat is mine. Um, but the truth of the matter is, the reason why this hat is special, I, I talk about it here all the time, it's magical. Um, if I am capable of reaching out with it and ultimately letting go of the idea that it's mine, it will go out into the world, have a couple of adventures, and eventually it will always come back to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think it's far more interesting to think about the possibility of magic you know, not, not be holding on to things so tightly and maybe think about the possibility of magic is a much more exciting moment than it is to think about, well, this is my hat. It's just a hat if I don't let go of it. So that was the first thing that got me kind of messed up. It's a stupid, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. Well, I'm not, but I'm, I'm aware that it's a stupid juggling trick. You know, we throw the hat, we catch the hat. I used to actually, and this kind of gets me into it, it was this idea that um, I used to take on that noun, that very lofty title, I am a juggler. It sounds very important, doesn't it? I know lots of famous jugglers, and they all sound very important. But the truth of the matter is, a title is sort of like an edifice, like a monolith. It's like a statue. It's like the Sphinx, which is full of dead people and really out of date. <sighs> so, you know, maybe good for a resume, but really bad for like when I get up in the morning, what are you doing? Stuff I did two years ago. Nobody cares. They care what we're doing now. The only good thing about, about you know, that stuff is it got me to here, and that's awesome. But I got caught up 
in the, the title. I got caught up in the, the noun of it all. And I forgot to be a verb. You know, to be a noun is I'm a juggler. Okay, well, juggle something. Prove it. Uh-oh. Now the minute I'm juggling and I drop something, I'm undermining. Now, that's kind of funny because I undermine. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was clever. <laughs> this is why I don't normally tell jokes. Just share ideas. But, uh, I, you know, it, it actually kind of takes the weight out of it. But if I, if I just happen to be some idiot who's juggling, well, now there's, there's a realm of possibility. I could, I could be a guy doing juggling, or if I drop one on the floor, it could be an opportunity. That could be the beginning of comedy. Uh, and some people call me a clown. And I found out something interesting, that clowns don't actually, you know, you don't, you're not, I'm not clowning, I, I do clown, which sounds like a particular drug that we'll not spend a lot of time on. <laughs> but in the end, what we're talking around in a big way is entitlement. We're talking, you know, this, this sort of idea that, that you know, this is, this is you know, I'm important, I'm on the stage, I, this is my time, and uh, this is my act, which I'm really sorry about. But it's a terrifying thought to think that someone could come up here and kind of operate on that, on that level. I'm sure it happens, but to me, when I come up here, my hope is that I come up here, and I stand here, and this is our time. We spend a minute together, and everything I'm doing, everything I try to do in the work I do, I try to give to you guys, my audience, who comes with me. And that's exciting. And I know that performers who are working so hard, performers in, my, in the circus tro troupe, my troupe, in mine again, uh, but, but really, they've done the work to be there. Anyone who does the work gets to be there. One of the things that's interesting about circus is not that you have to be, you know, pedigreed, classically trained, and resume in order to get to do stuff. I mean, those things help, I'm sure. But the truth is, if you walk in the door capable of doing the job, well, you get the job, and there's very few places left in the world where that's true. And it's, it's exciting to me to think that you can, you can still have that. And I'm, I'm glad that we built that here. Yeah! I didn't point. Yeah! Awesome. <laughs> I'd like to point out that I assumed it was my gag, and it's really his. It'd be fun for me to think about the fact that I, I just call the shots on that, but the truth is it's up to him whether or not we get. Yeah! And I'm very grateful that I have it because it's, nice, it's a nice fun thing to do. As I, I come up here and I start thinking and getting away from this sort of selfish idea that this is my skill, something I own and gets taken away from me if I'm not good enough, or it, and, and, I, and I stop thinking about the idea that I come up here and it's my act and it becomes our time, it gets a lot more interesting. This became more interesting when we started getting a little input from the outside, a little nod here, a smile, a little joke. Now suddenly it's something worth doing. Before it was just some idiot babbling about something he was afraid of. I think tonight you're gonna see performers take the stage and it's, if you wonder how important you are to the process, realize they have spent their lives honing a skill, and they're gonna stand right here center stage, look into these just evil lights, and they're gonna just give it to you. It's yours now. They want you to have it, and I think that's beautiful. And I think the most amazing thing, you know, and going into the holidays, it's kind of sappy to talk about, but it, the one thing that may be, you know, mine and all of ours, is that, you know, we, we didn't build a show here, we built a family a very strange, very dysfunctional family. Yeah. And, and the one thing I'll, I'll claim ownership to is, is the fact that I'm, I'm very, cloud, very glad and very proud to call it my tribe, and that I get one really cool job before all of my friends come and blow your minds. I get to stand here center stage, look at all of you and be an idiot for a few minutes and then say welcome to the open stage. Yeah.